Real excited about that and happy belated birthday. And thank you thank for making you. time. Of course. Really, I know you've got a hectic life as a haunt season ends and Mary Farm begins. So we, we do appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, my life kind of never slows down. <laughs> so it's nice when I have a chance to kind of breathe and do stuff that I enjoy. Hey, that's yeah. awesome. I, I so love to hear. Yeah, you got to you gotta always have some you time. That's always important. For sure. Very important. All right. Well, let's kick this sucker off. This is uh, two years in the making right here. And I'm and we're finally here and I'm excited. A lot of dreams are coming true right now. Um, <laughs> so let's go. So the season finale, Scare Actor Appreciation Month. I'm so excited to be uh, joined with Sammy for the, the finale of Scare Actor Appreciation Month. It's been a, a very great Scare Actor Appreciation Month this season. We've had tons of amazing guests this year, um, and we had to end it big. We had to end it like with someone that we've been wanting to do since we started Scare Actor Appreciation Month. Like This is the person we've wanted to interview for so long, and now we get that opportunity. So please welcome to the show, for the first time ever, Miss Glow, the bride, how are you doing today? I am doing fantastic. It is, uh, it is two years in the making um, that I know we've been back and forth over the years trying to do this. Your life is, 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 is very busy. Our lives are very busy. So, like, the scheduling's just never worked. But finally, in 2022, the stars aligned. We made everything work. Um, and I'm a little kid in a candy store right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really happy that it finally worked out, actually, because... I know that every single time that we talked about it, it was just like something kept coming up and I felt so bad, but I'm really happy that this time around, like it's happening now. <laughs> it's, no, we're, we're, we're very uh, honored and excited to have you on the show today to talk a little bit about your, your haunt career and, and where you are today. Um, Cause you know us, even after haunt ends, we can't get enough of it. I mean, it's going into Christmas and I'm still talking about haunt. <laughs> so um uh, that is something that I'm I'm very passionate about, and I love hearing behind the scenes about. So, um, let's 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 start from the beginning. Uh, when was your like first horror or haunt experience, like ever, to your knowledge? Wow. Um. Honestly, like in my family, nobody likes anything horror related. I mean, besides my sister, but that's a whole different story. Um. But as far as me growing up, like, my mom hates anything scary. Like she thinks it's so weird. Like at first when I told her like all these things that I wanted to do or whatever, she was just like, uh, that's, that's strange. <laughs> but honestly, like my fascination started like with my cousins, I would go to their house and we'd watch all of these horror movies. I remember my very first horror movie was Nightmare on Elm Street. Nice. And it's still probably one of my favorites just because of that reason. Um, but yeah, that was my favorite thing, you know, sneak away on the weekends, spend the night <laughs> at my cousin's house, watch a bunch of scary movies, come home, not be able to sleep. <laughs> Have my mom yell at me because I'm watching all these scary <laughs> movies, but I couldn't get enough. Oh, I mean, I think that's why we all love the what horror movies are what they're amazing. They're great. You know, as a kid, they scare the shit of us, but as adults, we just find them fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So started young, watching scary movies, Nightmare on Elm Street, other other films of that of that era. Uh, you know, making you lose sleep. Uh, when did you discover like uh, like haunted attractions like Not Scary Farm? So this is an even funnier one. So, I mean, I always heard about the event. Like I went a few times in high school. To me, it was never like, oh my God, I have to work this. Did I enjoy it? Yeah, I thought it was awesome. Like I used to love going to Scary Farm and just like, you know, watching everything that I was doing. I always enjoyed all the mazes, but it never felt to me like something like, I have to be here, I need to do this. Like I just would go enjoy it once for the season and be like, okay, maybe I'll come back again next year with my friends. It was nothing that I was like super obsessed about. I didn't think about it year round the way I do now. I kind of lived that life year round. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of surprising to me, like when I think back how like, not that I was uninterested, 
it just wasn't like a main focus for me. Yeah. No, I, 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 I was the same way. Like I, when, as a kid, you know, you watch all these horror movies and back at the day, back in the day, obviously the POVs and everything that they were very limited on YouTube and whatnot. And as a kid watching all this stuff, you get so fascinated and you finally want to go to it. But then you realize at a young age you can't handle it, so you don't want to go back till you get a little bit older to handle it. Um, but I, I think for me it was just like walking in, seeing everything, just being amazed by it, just being fascinated by it, and just being like, I don't know why I like this so much, but I I like it, and I want to come back again. Like it's just one of those feelings. I don't know. It's a vibe. No, for sure. And I think I'm totally gonna date myself, but like growing up. There was no YouTube. There was no social media. There was none of that. Right. So I can see why now people are way more into it because you're able to literally just be like, hey, I want to look this up real quick and watch a full fledged video of an entire event. Yeah. I couldn't do that. So there yeah. was none of that at all. Like when I first started working haunt, basically you would work the, with the people you work with. You might keep in touch with a couple of people that you exchange numbers with. Nobody knew anybody's business. You didn't know who was with who. Wow. Like you would, you know, talk to the two or three people that you got close to and you wouldn't see anybody else until the next season came around. So to me, it's like so interesting to see where I started to where everything's at now. Like yeah. you literally can look up anything about anybody and there it is. Do you know what I mean? It's, so it's, it's really interesting, especially when I hear like, oh yeah, like I used to love watching this and watching that. Like I never had the opportunity to do any of that. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's it's I mean it's 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 amazing how far technology has connected the world like in the last couple of years just to see like from where we are. I mean, we have you were you were lucky to get like some good like some HD back in the day. Now we have like 8K. And I'm just like <laughs> that's like a 20 year gap like how did we get here so fast we shouldn't be this yeah. advanced you know like it, it's it's cool to see i mean you know especially with the world of youtube you know you're you're so driven into this world where you, like you said you can literally look up anything and be anywhere and and experience that i mean how many times have i looked up at other theme parks around the world that i would love to visit one day you know it's like it's so cool to see that that you can do that yeah i do that all the time to be honest since i don't really get a chance to go to other events like, obviously, I have a bucket list of things I would love to do. Right. But just being able to go on YouTube and, like, fall down this crazy rabbit hole where I just end up in the strangest places but finding the coolest stuff, like, it's amazing to me. Oh, it's fascinating. It really is. Yeah, I agree. Those rabbit holes are, um, are, are, are vast across the Internet. You can always find something new and interesting um, and, and really get a full scope of it by – going on YouTube, doing a quick Google search, whatever. Uh, but the one rabbit hole I'm looking to dive into today um, is the beginning of your career. Um, so what was the first year that you, you worked Scary Farm and, and where were you? So my very first year was 2000. And I was actually a blackout in Horwood, which okay. was uh, where Wilderness Dance Hall is, where Origins is now. Okay. So that was my very first year. And um, it was actually really interesting for me because I feel like so many people nowadays come into, you know, wanting to be a monster. I want to be a slider. I want to be this and that. But honestly, like being a blackout my first year, I feel like I learned so much and I got to be around some of like the most amazing monsters I've ever gotten a chance to work with. And you kind of, you think back to, you know, who these people were and watching them kind of grow into their, their own. And like, there's some of the monsters I think everybody looks up to. So it's, it's really interesting, you know? Yeah. Um, I always tell people that like when people try to be like, oh, well, no, I, I only want to be on streets. I'm like, dude, you realize people literally pay to come to this event to get in line for mazes. They're not getting in line for streets. Yes, yeah. streets are cool. Believe me, I, I get it. But the whole part, you know, that everybody wants is the maze. Yeah. They want to go see what's new. They want to get scared in these haunted houses. You know what I mean? Yep. Hundred percent. I mean, that's yeah. That's I mean, when they advertise things, their their main advertisements are what mazes are coming. I mean, for example, take an example as a company like Halloween Horror Nights. What is their pull in every single year? We're gonna do IPs based on these movies that you are terrified of, and you get to walk through them and experience them. Your nightmares come to life, um, and you have the scare zones in between to keep that fear and adrenaline going. So when you go to the next maze. It could just keep building. So, I mean, that's what I, I think I've always loved. This. That's that's one of the things I've always loved about the structure of Haunt is your adrenaline and fear just keeps going no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like way back in the day, there used to be like there was scare zones. But then you'd have your dead zones where it was like, OK, this is where I'm safe. 
Yeah. And I kind of love that that's no longer a thing. But then again, I also kind of loved that because people would go and they'd get used to being, you know, calm again. And then they'd go back into the, you know, the elements and then it would start all over again. So that was kind of cool. That's always fun. That's always fun. So uh, the year 2000, that uh, the, the dawn of the new millennia, that was um, the first year you got to scare. So then uh, you got to be a black guy. You got a little bit of experience. So after seeing a lot of people scaring and whatnot, did, did this kind of drive you to be like, I, I kind of want to try this now? Honestly, yeah. Like after watching so many people and like being like, this actually looks like a lot of fun. Now, also as a kid, I was really into scaring my family <laughs> <laughs> aren't we all yeah so it was something that i felt would just kind of come naturally and strangely enough it did um <laughs> so that yeah my second year was 2001 and i went to blood bayou which is over in mystery lodge right so uh that year that was the second year that they had the the first year was a voodoo witch project but they turned it into the blood bayou which is the year that i started and i was a blue girl which is basically like these ghostly looking girls that would walk around. It's like, I don't, I'm sure you guys have looked it up because yeah. I know you guys are super into haunt. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was like this like redneck backwoods maze. It was a lot of fun. Like I got to work with so many people, people that I still know now. Like it was a great time. Damn. That sounds like it does sound. I mean, I've, I've gotten to, uh, I had the experience to do that now and it's, it's, it is so much fun to scare it a maze because um, the way I looked at it, the environment that you're in, I'm like, this is all me. So I'm going to make this like the most memorable thing for, for a lot of people. And hopefully mm -hmm. they come back and, and talk about that. But yeah, I mean, I liked your earlier when you were saying like, oh, I mean, why wouldn't you start? I mean, people come to the mazes. Like if you make that room yours and that environment yours, people mm -hmm. are going to talk about you um, by the end of the night when they're on their way home. Like, hey, remember that one scare? And it's like, yeah, I remember that. So that's what I like trying to do. And I, I, I believe you're the same way. You want to make sure people remember like Absolutely. You're, the, you're the talk of the maze right there. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the biggest reason why I stayed working mazes for eight seasons. Oh. I was in no rush to go out to the streets. Was I offered opportunities to? Yeah, but I enjoyed what I was doing so much. I mean, what is there to not like about a maze? Like you have everything set up in your favor. You got the lighting, you got the sound, you know. Yes, some people don't like the constriction, but like, once you own your room and you figure out what works, like it is amazing. It's so much fun, especially yeah. if you end up working with people that you work really well off of and you guys just kind of feed off each other. I've always said like, if there was a maze that I was really into, I'd have no problem going back to a maze. No problem at all. Cause it was that fun. Yeah. Oh my God. The, yeah. The mazes, uh, mazes are fun. I mean, they, I, I, and for me as a fan, I mean, the one thing I love too is, uh, I always love the attention. I mean, cause this is just from, doing theater in high school I just love to pay attention to the background things like things that a lot of people don't usually notice like little small details and stuff um that's why I was glad when they brought the behind the fog tour that we can kind of get a more inside look this year of of those little details and uh it just it just expands my love for Han even more so like just to just to kind of go through a maze and kind of see everything but also being scared by like you know some very talented people and then just kind of seeing detail and then getting scared again like that's one of my favorite things to do because I'm like okay I'm a I'm admiring the art of the detail and I'm admiring the art of the scare. So <laughs> it's just a back and forth game for me. Totally. So how long were you, uh, were you on the Bayou for? Uh, I only did that for one season. Okay. Uh, I took 2002 off, which I know is something that everyone's always so scared to do. Like, Oh no, I can't take a year off. Life happens, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know, you, you, I always tell people like, yes, this is fun. This is important to you, but life comes first. And like, I had things going on that year. So I took the year off. I came back in 2003. Um, I was in Red Moon, which was in the log ride. Okay. Back so in the I day. got to be one of the little reds there. Um, I started off working outside, like in the queue area. Yeah. And we slowly started losing a lot of the talent that worked inside. Oh, no. Yeah. And so I ended up inside the mountain. And I will say this till the day I die, that place is freaking haunted. Is oh, really? it really? It's, okay, so <laughs> a little background on me. Like, I'm super sensitive to that kind of stuff. And I know a lot of people don't believe in it and whatever. But I have seen enough where I'm like, dude, that shit's real. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when I was in there, I had so much weird shit happen to me. 
like wow. legit to the point where I was like, I can't be in here anymore. Like wow. this is ridiculous. So I ended up getting my spot moved. Um, I was originally in a spot that was like almost to the very top of the mountain where I was outside. Like there was, there was like one top spot and then I was in the second one down. Right. And there's like weird, like the whole inside of the mountains, like wooden planks. So you can hear every footstep, like anything, any little noise, you hear it. Right. So I remember multiple times I would hear like somebody walking over to give me my break. Um, since you're inside of, you know, a ride and there's a you know, water flume and everything else, like you had to be tethered to a wall. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I'm tethered to the wall. I hear somebody walking up to the door. I'm like, oh, cool. Somebody's coming to give me a break. And I would stand there and I'd wait and I'd wait and nobody would be there. So I'd go and I'd open the door and there'd be nobody standing there. Wow. So that happened once and I was like, okay, maybe, you know, I'm trying to figure out what, what it could be, but then it kept happening. And then finally I felt something pull on my, on my tether <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm done. Yep. <laughs> I'm out of here. Yep. Same. I'm gone. Done. Yeah. It was, it was not fun times. Uh, not to mention like the weird shadows I would see go across the, the rocks. Like yep. there's that been so many me. things that I can tell you about that. It was, it was not a fun time. <laughs> Mind you, yeah, mind, I, uh, mind you, audience, this is pre Conjuring Day. So she was witnessing the Conjuring before they even were famous movies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I always want them to bring back the, uh, the actors on the rides. But if it's haunted, you know, I, I can, I can, I can take the L on that one. We can, we can lose out on those scares because I'm not trying to traumatize <laughs> I mean, anyone. But let me be ready for it. Like, don't catch me off guard like that. <laughs> <laughs> like in between logs, she's gonna pull out a little ghost hunting device, and you yeah, know what right. I mean. It's like all with my EVP, like what? start Zach Bagans and everything. You know, have the whole Ghost Adventures crew. That'd be old. yeah. Zach Bagans, if you're watching, do a, a Ghost Adventures uh, video at Knots. That'd be fun. Yes, yes, that please. Cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I've heard CS is uh, is haunted, but I've never heard that the uh, the the log. The oh, log I ride. can I can tell you about a lot of spots, but that's a story for another day. Hey, Oof. all right, we'll get we'll get you on a shoot the shit episode. <laughs> okay That'd be fun. sounds good but yeah so I mean, yeah so i'm yeah. so from that one spot where i was terrified i ended up in what was considered the rib cage at that time because it was like right before the big drop right right yeah so in that spot i was way more comfortable i got to listen to rob zombie all night and nice. i could actually see somebody across from me so i was like okay cool nice <laughs> Other than that, like the season finished out cool and like I was good. I'm like, I'm never going back to the log ride. Cool. Man. Yeah. I mean, I, it, now that you bring that up, it just, I've always felt uneasy in that ride. <laughs> Even as a kid, I'm like, it, it, back in the day when they had that one drop that was just in the dark, I was like, someone's going to pop out, dude. I already know it. And now that you. So what's great up, for me is like in my regular job, considering that we go into these things to like decorate and stuff like that, like there's been a couple times where I've had to walk in there, like this past build i went to walk in there to like paint something and i walk right back out i was like nope not doing it somebody else can do it no thank you wow Even i tried i tried to be real brave and i was like nope not doing the it the ghost still knows who you are they were like oh you're coming to visit it's nice to see you no, again that, yeah that's that's why they that's what they're doing <laughs> yeah they're like it's nice to see you again how you been yeah no <laughs> let's not yeah right um but i mean yeah that, that i mean now that you bring that up, now it's like I'm never gonna see that ride the same again. I'm just gonna be like, this ride's fucking haunted. I'm gonna straight just yep. I'm gonna straight bring an EMF to the park just so I could just do that the entire Dude, ride. I thought about it. You know, when we're there, like till the sun comes up, there's been times where I'm like, I really wanna just do this. <laughs> Why not? Just be like on the brakes, just <laughs> Yeah, right. Funny. Uh, um so after the log ride, what was that two thousand three? That was your uh, your return year. Um after taking a year off, where do you go next in 2004? 2004, I went to Jaguar, which was actually like a queue line. Yes. Wait, what? They had a queue line there at one time? Yeah, yeah. It was kind of at that time, it was kind of considered a joke. Like that was like the rookie spot to end up. And uh, I honestly will say now that was probably one of my favorite seasons. I had so wow. much fun. Awesome. Like this is before there was like a scare zone in Fiesta, right? Yeah. Well, at that time, uh, my talent captain that you know was in charge of us there he used to let me run around fiesta all the time so i always laugh i'm like i was the first fiesta monster <laughs> <laughs> there you go breaking in the rule yeah. breaking in the ground right there i like it yeah no it was a fun time it was it was really weird it was a strange setup the theme was kind of interesting i was like this weird serpent goddess aztec look i think of like from dust till dawn kind of look gotcha um 
they actually asked me to do it as a favor and I was like, okay, whatever. I've always been the kind of person, like, if you're like, here, can you please do this? I'm like, yeah, whatever. Like, I don't care. I've never felt like I have to be this character. I have to do like, give me something. Let me work with it. Like I have always felt like that's more fun for me to try to figure something out and yeah. see what works with it than to be determined. Like I can only do this and that's it. You know? I mean, I've seen uh, from from what we heard so far, you've done a wide variety of different things. So I mean, and, and you've worked with it, and it may, and it worked for you. So I mean, uh, as long as like that's what I always say, as long as it, it works, why not keep doing it? No, totally for you sure. Know, I love that. So we got so, yeah, haunted, so that, was, uh, that was an interesting year. <laughs> so we got I, I I've learned multiple things already. Haunted log ride, and then the queue. There was a queue line uh, scares on Jaguar because I've been saying that for a long time. Because I was like, it's kind of a creepy queue. Yeah, uh, I mean I it worked. Think... In theory, it was it was fine. Like there was a couple like little, you know, covered areas, so it felt kind of like a maze. But yeah. it, it was literally just the queue, like walking up to the ride. Man, no safe place, I guess. Nope. Well, wow. Okay, where are we at now? We're in two thousand. That was four. That was now four. we're in five. I, I I'm glad we have you on because this is going to be probably one of my favorite episodes. So let's keep going. I I'm a nerd for this <laughs> stuff. Like. Keep me entertained. I'm, I'll, I'll stay here and listen all night. So 2005, that's where it really kind of came all together for me. Uh, 2005 was the year I went to the asylum. Oh, okay. And it was kind of ended up as a thing where since I worked in Jaguar that year before, and they're like, hey, you did us a favor. Like, we really want you to try this character. Um, that was Daniel Miller's maze. Okay. And uh, yeah. I think he's the one who actually handed me the card. He, they used to have, like, certain face characters where they'd have, specific cards written out with all the character info. Right. And if they wanted you to like consider a spot or they wanted you for a certain spot, they used to ha just hand you a card. Like, cause you know, the whole hiring process was so different back then. Like right. yeah. insanely different. So, you know, you could be standing out there waiting to get processed. You, you used to walk in and they'd hand you a book and you, it was like for whatever, they would pick like three venues and then they'd be like, all right, pick one of these. And you wouldn't, necessarily be like oh no i want to be in that one like no these are, these are the ones i'm giving you and then you oh. look through the book and see what was available and be like okay i want that one so it was always very wow. interesting to see what some people ended up with and like say you went in and uh say you wanted asylum but somebody else already had the book oh well you got to pick one from right here yep <laughs> so yeah yeah that is the um, process yeah very different from what we hear about today you know so super different yeah, yeah. for sure but yeah, so that year they uh, were kind of like, well, you did us a favor last year. We, now we really want you to, to try this character. And it was a nurse. And at that time, uh, Asylum started in 2003. Okay. So that character had already kind of become like the coveted spot for most female talent. Right. Everybody wanted to be a nurse. Everybody wanted to work in Asylum. Like, So when they handed me that, I was kind of like, uh, you know, I don't really care what I am. Like, I'll do whatever. They're like, no, we really want you to try this. And I'm like, there's literally people out here crying for this spot. Like, <laughs> dude, just give it to them because I know that they're going to start giving me the daggers if I take this, you know? <laughs> and they're like, no, no, no. Like, we saved this for you. I was like, here, I'll hold on to the card. But when I walk in there, I want to see what else there is. And I'll let you know if I take it or not. So, you know, I kind of thought about it. And I was like, you know what? I'll do it. Whatever. Nice. So yeah, that was my first year in asylum. Um, it was honestly the year I met so many of my really good friends that I'm still friends with to this day. Nice. Uh, working in that maze, it just, we all kind of felt like a family, honestly. Like we all stayed in the maze. I, I worked that maze from 2005 to 2008 when it closed out. Nice. I stayed until it was done because that's kind of what we did. That's what I miss about mazes nowadays. It's like, you would go, you'd bond with everybody, and nobody would leave. Do you know what I mean? We right. literally all stayed there until that maze was done. Yeah. It was never a like, oh, I'm going to work this one year, and I'm going to try to get out of here and go to streets. Like, it, that wasn't even the you vibe got, You all. guys made it like your residency. That was like every year yep. coming back, like we're doing another year. It's our residency. So let's, yep. let's close this out together. I like that. That's a good bond right there. Um, no, totally. and, and so how did that first year after you, you know, you're, you're meeting these people for the first time, all that stuff, how'd that first year go for you? Uh, and then we'll, I, I would love to hear how it progresses. Honestly, uh, it was different, of course, because if you think about the other places I worked, it was nothing right. <laughs> compared to, to Asylum. Asylum was probably one of the scariest mazes I think that we had at that time. Like 
everybody I know who I've ever spoken to who went through the maze we're always like, dude, that traumatized me. Wow. Like legit traumatized me. I was like, are you serious? Like, wow, that's <laughs> so crazy, you know? And it's even funnier for me to like people that I work with now who are obviously so much younger. They're like, I remember seeing you in there. You scared the shit out of me. I'm like, good. <laughs> good. Now you're here. <laughs> yeah. No, totally. Yeah. But that first year, obviously it was kind of me like adjusting to a new environment, of course. And kind of, like I was saying, you kind of start looking to see what works, what doesn't. Luckily with that character, I kind of had free range of the entire maze because my character pretty much fit in any room. Um, nice. We did have like a certain area that was just like the nurse's hall. Right. And, you know, we had like cages and so we had a lot of stuff to still kind of use to our advantage, you know? We used to use those cages a lot, like when it was really, really busy. Cause you know, when you're walking through a maze and the whole hall's filled up with people. And then also being a female, like trying not to get groped in these tiny little nurse dresses. Yep. Yeah. Cages <laughs> Those are cages your best friend. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. They came in handy for sure. Nice. But, um, yeah, that first year was, was a lot of fun. That was nice. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, that, that's smart though. I mean, the, now you have that protection. Not a lot of people these days have that protection and you had that protection available to you. Take advantage yeah. of it. You know, it's, it's the best thing right there. Take advantage. Also of in that time, it's like you got to know every, like I said, you got to know everybody really well. And I feel like we all constantly just looked out for each other. Oh yeah. Which was really good. Like, you know, I had guys that worked in either room right next to us and they were always checking in on us to make sure we were good. And, or if something were to happen, I knew I could just run over there and they'd handle it basically, you know? That's all. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the kind of support system right there that you always need a good group of friends that will have each other's backs. I mean, those are the real ones right there. Yep, for sure. Yeah. And just make uh just making sure we understand what uh asylum was. That's where Bloodline is now, right? That was that that location? Yeah, so it didn't actually start there. It started on Stagecoach Lawn, which was a whole different location and it was yeah. freaking gorgeous. It like the whole like there was trees and every it just looked amazing. But the second year, that's when it moved uh backstage. Okay. Yeah. And it wasn't in a warehouse at that time. It was literally just, you know, standalone little building or whatever. And then what year was it? I want to say it was like 2007, maybe. I don't know. It's, it's a long time ago. <laughs> um, I think it was around then that we got the warehouse. And then from then on, I was in the warehouse. But yes, that's where Paranormal was. And now it's Bloodline. Nice. And I think that led in, I think once it moved over to the, uh, uh, the warehouse, it, it led into Club Blood, right? Was that? Yeah. 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 And then before we even did all that, like, I don't know if you remember fairy tales. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at one time you would have to go through fairy tales to get into asylum. And I was always uh, like, is this how we trick people into it? No offense to anybody who worked fairy tales, but like, <laughs> you guys, you're, you're forcing people to go through that maze to be able to get into this maze, which is smart. Yeah. Like yeah. I get it. Cause it's kind of, I kind of feel that way. Like with dark entities, I feel like you kind of get pushed. Like you, now you have to go here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I actually did miss that concept when they used to do the, like the back to back as a fan i love that i'm like oh i'm getting out of one maze going right into another maze let's go oh, yeah. like let's keep mm -hmm. going i like this and they were one of the only haunts at the time when i went to not scary from that actually did that and i was like well, this is a cool concept i wish more haunts would adapt to this um so if they ever want to bring that concept back again i mean i'm for it and they kind of do it with bloodline and and um and dark entities but it used to be like you got out of bloodline or you got out of whatever maze was there yep. in the back it goes, it goes straight, straight in. into the next one yeah <laughs> uh yeah. to my knowledge the last time that was like that i think was tooth fairy right yeah and then before that was delirium yeah that's yeah. right yeah because i remember doing it with tooth fairy like getting out of one maze and then going into tooth fairy i was like okay mm -hmm, this is cool mm -hmm. um but yeah those backstage areas those those are, those are now freaking so huge of how they can create so much in such little space yeah, I find it really interesting how we've been able to do so much more backstage. But honestly, like build wise for us, like it's so helpful because there's a lot of stuff we can't get to in the park, you know, because of everything else that's going on year round. Yeah. yeah. So for us to be able to work on stuff backstage, it, it's really helpful. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, so year one happens. Uh, you get to know everybody. You get to kind of get to know the environment. How do you come back with the vengeance in year two? You know what? I just, because of I had so much fun, I was like, I can't leave now. Like, I feel so committed to this. Like, I want to keep trying to evolve this character. Like, to me, it's oh, even with the character I'm in today, like, I always want to come back and see how I can step this up a little bit more. Like, I want to see what else I can do with this. So that's kind of how I felt when I was in Asylum. So it kind of evolved from, you know, the first year 
The second year, I feel like I put a little bit more effort into it. By the third year, I feel like I really started putting more into it because I started bringing in like, I brought in, started bringing in my own costumes and like I made different variations of it, bringing in more props. I was really kind of just shaping it into be exactly what I wanted it to be. And with that being said, that's when I started noticing that people were noticing my character, which was really cool. Like I never was like, oh yeah, come, come see me in this maze. But I would have people that would reach out to me and be like, hey, like I waited two hours in this line to see you for like <laughs> 10 seconds. And I was like, dude, that's flattering. You know, like <laughs> that's all good. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. I mean, cause you just, you in a way just made your own Frankenstein's monster. Mm -hmm. You just crafted your own, your own character and, and you made that a star of its own. And, and for people to wait that long to go see you just for 10 seconds. I mean, that's, that's awesome. I mean, I think I've done that. We did that. I did that one time. Cause I had a few friends working the weekend maze and I was like, I waited two and a half hours to see you for five seconds and it was worth it. <laughs> no, totally. And yeah. it's, it just feels good when somebody tells you that, like, it's so flattering. Like, wow, that's really cool. You know? Yeah. No, it's, 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 I, I, that's the one thing I do. I love supporting um, any friends that we have working mazes or, or scare zones or anything. Cause I mean, they're all there to have a, a fun time hopefully. And, and a great time and scare the living hell out of people. But, um, I want to go in there and, and cheer for them often the sidelines. So uh, I'm, I'm that one weird fanboy who just has a bunch of friends who scare. <laughs> but honestly, we all love that because it's, it's great to feel like you actually want to see what I do. And that's pretty cool. You know, oh, yeah. like, yeah, we see people that come repeat times or whatever, but to have somebody, especially somebody that, you know, who's genuinely like enjoying it. And like, you can tell on somebody's face when they're like, wow, this is fun. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. So I've always we said, all appreciate that. I don't know how you feel about this, but I've always said for me, uh, when I'm in the hot environment uh, during October and September, it's just very therapeutic to me. Like, Oh yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's, it's odd. People will find it odd, but it's like, I am odd. I am strange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's what we all have in common, so it makes sense. Yeah. We all we're all little Wednesday Adams, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> the new uh, highest grossing uh Netflix <laughs> show right now. Yeah. Netflix show. Dude, I love it. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet, but it's on the agenda. So good. Uh, all right, so Asylum closes. Where where do we go next in your journey? So before I actually leave there, I, I want to kind of add a note okay. to that. It's like oh. as I evolved my character, like with the people I kind of worked with, I, I did kind of build a lot of friendships with most, I always build friendships with maze, like male characters all the time. Like I always feel like our characters always feed off each other because of the fact that in my mind, I've always wanted to be a female character that's aggressive. Yeah. Like I want you to look at me and be like, oh, look, she's cute. And then I'm going to scare the shit out of you. And I feel like there was a big amount of time where it's like all the female, female characters just like, I want to have makeup. I want to look cute. I look at this costume. Like, that's where I think that I went in and I was like, I don't want to do that. I want to do something different. I want to scare the living shit out of you. Like I want to be terrifying. And yeah. I think that that's where I took my character. And that's because previously, you know, obviously the girls who were nurses, they were great at what they did. Everybody has had their own version of what it was. Mm -hmm. But for me, in my mind, I just wanted to be terrifying. Like I want to be aggressive. I don't want you to expect I'm five two. Like <laughs> <laughs> I have, giant guys running from me like you know what i mean like yeah. that's what i always wanted and i feel that that year some of the guys that i work with they're the ones who always put in my mind um just always be aggressive if you're aggressive people aren't going to mess with you yeah and that will always be stuck in my head no matter what character no matter what zone no matter what i step into in life like that's something that always is in the back of my head and it's honestly something that has really worked for me yeah no i mean it's funny you're saying that because we're not at that we're not at that area of of your career just yet cuz there's a lot of what I'm hearing I see a lot of today. I do. And and it and I appreciate the fuck out of it because it is so fucking talented. And we we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that because I I can't wait to talk about that. Uh, but a lot of what you just said you 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 still that's like your mission statement that you still use to this day and I see that on the streets. I see that with since I've been going to not scary farm and seeing your character i've been I, I see that and and that mission statement is still true to this day i think anyone who's ever seen you perform out there can say that so yeah that that's why i had to make sure to add that in because that honestly is what once i learned that like once i got that inspiration and i just have carried that with me 
And I feel like I've carried a part of each character from that point on into the next one and kind of formed it around that and tried to see what I can, you know, build off of it. So, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> so Asylum, uh, Asylum closes out. You got to finally close it out with the, the family that you made, your residency that you, 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 you stayed, um, making the maze what it was, one of the probably – top mazes of the event uh in the in the last years um you guys taking that story and kind of making it yours and and really having fun with it and everything that ends it's all over that that chapter's closed but uh, the the relationships last forever and that's the fun that's the awesome part about it um you go somewhere new and and you get to see each other succeed or if you guys work together like that's the fun part about it where do you go next after asylum closes so before Asylum was officially closed, um, I was actually approached by somebody who were like, hey, you know, the, the maze is finally closing. We have an idea for you. What do you think about this? And what I was offered was to be the war widow in Ghost Town, which was a character that had already been retired for quite a while. Right. And so, you know, right off the bat, I was like, whoa, like, <laughs> like it's flattering, but I was like kind of intimidated. Like, well, why me? You know what I mean? Like, okay, like, thank you for thinking of me. And this is obviously before the season had even ended. And they're like, yeah, we already kind of have a costume for you. And I was like, what? <laughs> so <laughs> they took me into the warehouse and they're like, see, this is the costume we made. I was kind of blown away. I was like, wow, this is really cool. So yeah, so the next year was 2009 and I obviously I had auditioned for Ghost Town. Uh, that's around the time when we first started having auditions again, because I know way back when they did have auditions pretty you know, regularly, but in the years like leading up to me going to ghost town, there wasn't really, there was like this giant purge that happened. I think it was that year or the year before. It was like, I don't know if you've ever heard about it, but it was groundbreaking. Like a lot of people left really because of it, unfortunately. Yeah. Wow. Um, so it felt like it was almost like this whole new crop of people were kind of coming into all of these spots. So there was a lot of like newer people in, you know, in ghost town and like just, just across the park. Right. Um, so I auditioned for the character. I auditioned for the war widow and that was the next character I was. Um, I war stayed widow. in that character for two seasons. I really loved it. It was a lot of fun. Um, the first year I was in a prosthetic, which is something I had never done in my life. I, it was new to me. It was weird. I, did not like it. <laughs> to be 100% <laughs> honest with you. Um, the reason being is I feel like I have a lot of expression right. when I'm in character. And for me, that kind of felt like a handicap almost for me. Like just having, like, I, I don't know how people do it with masks and some people are freaking great with it, but I could never myself do it. Like I wouldn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> right. No, a hundred percent. So that first year was definitely a learning curve for me. And it really made me appreciate so much more being in 2D makeup. Right. Um, obviously, I made it work for me. I just had to learn new ways of making it work for me. I felt like I had to be super animated rather than using my face, using my body. Yeah. Um, that's when I used to do a whole lot of back bends and just I was young and limber and able to do all of these things, <laughs> which is probably why my back hurts so bad now. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was a good year. It was definitely, like I said, it's just kind of a learning curve. Um, the next year they took me out of the prosthetic because I think that they also realized that it was kind of like, no, this is not, this is not good. Right. <laughs> we need you in this 2d makeup. It's so much better. And, and it was, it worked so much better. Um, the second year I also brought in my own costume. So I had like a variation to my character where I kind of felt like, you know, today I'm going to be this. And it was still obviously the same character, but you know, sometimes you feel like a different vibe when you have something completely different on. So yeah. Yeah. that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So two years as the war widow out in ghost town. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they handpicked this for you. This was something they're like, we want to, we want to get you up in ghost town now because you know, it, from what we've heard, you've literally, you've grinded, you worked, you, you made a name for yourself. You know what I mean? Like you uh, set out to accomplish what you wanted to accomplish and then some, um, and we're, we're barely, we're barely not even, we're not even in your prime yet. Like you're still, you're, <laughs> we're you're scratching the we're surface. Still, we're scratching the surface, <laughs> man. We're not even in your prime yet. I mean, you're, and yeah. you're already, you've already accomplished so much in that time. Um, 
getting both prosthetics and 2D makeup as your first year or your first and second year on Ghost Town. Um, where does it go from there? How I mean, the War Widow sound like it was a lot of fun for you. Where does it go from there? I honestly loved that character. Like I could have stayed in that character and been completely fine with it. Like it just worked for me. I, I loved it. Um, the next year I decided I was going to audition to go to Camp Snoopy. That was for Necropolis. Uh, oh. They kind of had mentioned that they're, they were going to make a character that was going to be like a nurse for, for that zone. So of course I was like, Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. Like, why not? You know? <laughs> So uh, I auditioned for that. Uh, some people were not very happy with me for leaving, but <laughs> I think they got over it. You're like, um, it's a nurse role. That's my specialty. That, that was my selling point. And that's why I was like, let's try something else. I mean, I had jumped from place to place for so long. Honestly, at that point, you right. know, Asylum was the longest I had ever been anywhere. That was for four seasons, right. which to me was like an eternity at that point because I had pretty much just worked one year, one year, you know. Yeah. So um, I went to Necropolis and I ended up staying there for three seasons. Um, my first year was, I'm going to be honest with you, it was rough. Like yeah. I went from Ghost Town, which is this giant area, right? Yeah. It's huge. Like even back then, like we had more rain of the area. Like we were allowed to go, you know, all the way down to Pony Express. Like we were able to go all the way down there. Like there was so much more stuff that we could do. We could go all the way toward the backstages. Like I, I remember insane. those days. So, yeah, they used to they they had you guys out there. I think even at one point mm -hmm. out to like past Silver Bullet too. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. Pretty much where Forsaken was. Like we had, you know, all yeah. that area to use, and yeah. it was crazy. So my first year in Camp Snoopy, like to me, I felt like I was all of a sudden this tiny little fishbowl compared to like this giant area I was in. So I don't, I kind of got like, not intimidated, but like kind of, it felt claustrophobic to me, you know, like, okay. Like, I feel like I'm walking up and down a driveway right now. Like, what the heck am I doing? Like, I started feeling like, I don't know if I can do this. I started like second guessing myself. I started thinking like, maybe I'm not cut out to do this. Like I was really kind of bummed to be honest. And then thinking I had, I mean, obviously I, I did have a lot of friends who were there. So it wasn't the fact of like, oh my God, I'm here by myself. But I missed a lot of my friends that were in ghost town. Cause a, a lot of them were people I worked with in asylum and like, we were really super tight and, you know, we'd all scare together and I didn't have them like yeah. specifically like one of my best friends, he was over there and I felt like, I felt like I ripped myself away from him and it felt so weird. Like, what the heck am I doing? And it, and it sucked because obviously I have all my other friends who are probably thinking like, well, what the hell am I, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I think it was mostly just because of like the environment, like just, like I said, just the space, like it felt so small to me. But so because of that, I came back my second year and I was like, you know what? I'm determined to make this so much more fun. Like I'm going to make this fun for myself. I already know what I'm walking into this time. The first time I didn't really know. And I think that that's maybe why it kind of caught me by surprise. Um, my second year, I was like, this is, I'm going to make this my bitch. Like we're doing this. We're, <laughs> I'm going to have fun. Yeah, That's it. I was just determined, you know? Yeah. And I, I did. Energy. I had a fucking great time. <laughs> I had the best time, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, I had such a great time that I got Monster of the Year that year. Congratulations oh, wow. for that right there. Much deserved. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I always, like, to me, it always trips me out because, like, like I was saying, like, my first year, I was kind of, like, so down about it. Like, not specifically, like, to put the area down, but just for myself, I just felt like I wasn't good enough, to be honest. Right. I started second-guessing myself. But, yeah, with that whole mentality, I went out there, and I was just like, okay, let's do it. And. Yeah. It happened, and then Monster of the Year came to you, and there were that was that that was that 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 was right there when you should have been like, I'm glad I did this. I yeah, no, I totally of, yeah. was, and you know, a lot of that I owe it to the people that I really was started running with all the time. Like, we would feed off each other. We had so much fun, and like, not having this giant space didn't matter to me anymore because I was having such a great time. Yeah, I mean that Monster of the Year. That's that's impressive right there. I've, I've, I always salute anyone who can win that because that's awarded. Not to like keep my own horn, but that was my third one. Third <laughs> At one. This point. Hey, look, that's what I'm saying. You're not even in your prime yet. <laughs> and you already won three Monster of the Years. Like, I mean, my first one, I don't know. I don't, I count it, but I don't count it because I got it when I was in Jaguar. 
Uh, so you made that work, and it it's still a win. It's a win. And then my second one was in Asylum. So nice. Asylum, much deserved. Yep, that was so. Amazing. So I got that one. Yeah. Um. So you do your time. At, you come back as the nurse. It, it must have been. It was kind of a new variation of it, but it was also kind of hopefully some familiar ground with you again, rebuilding that kind of from the ground up again. Um, how was overall though? Like, how was that to re, kind of rebuild from the ground up again? Like, you already had kind of something established in asylum, but this was something completely new. And to kind of take so those different. aspects, you know what I mean? Like, how oh, I, it was absolutely completely different because you know, a steampunk, yeah. B <laughs> vampires, yep. C when I got you know when I was sold the character, basically it was like, okay, this is gonna be a nurse, and I was literally. If you took away, you know, the nurse hat and the apron, that's the only thing that made it a nurse character. Okay. I was dressed as an aristoc uh, aristocrat, <laughs> okay. which was like the top of the food chain for Necropolis. Right. Yeah. So that kind of made it fun for me too, because some days I'd really play into the nurse. I, I actually brought my old like oxygen mask that I used to wear in Asylum that that's had, cool. was like full of blood. And like some days I'd wear that and I just totally go full that. And or some days I would just play into being an aristocrat. So it was kind of fun that I was able to kind of flip flop on that. Yeah. Which made it a lot more fun for me. And now for that, was that like on a, on a nightly basis for like one night you'd be like, I feel like doing this. Or was that like a week of week, week by week basis? We're like well, one week. And Honestly, like sometimes it was like halfway through the night where I was like, you know, I'm <laughs> yeah, screw this it. On real quick. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just change it in the middle of the night, middle of the run. I love that. that just, yeah, cause then you get whatever. To, then when you come back in the zone later on, you're someone completely different. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I still look similar, but it was just like, yeah something else to play with let's let's do this it's a new toy oh yeah oh yeah so you do your time in cs where are we at year wise now i'm so lost but I'm so gonna... i was there 2011 11. 2012 and 2013 okay. in necropolis three so years. the next year i took off 2014 i did not work okay uh i had my son that year so yes obviously couldn't work oh yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah at that point yeah. you were just like full mom mode you're like I'm being a yeah. mom now. I mean, I, that was my my year off, so I was a pass holder. So I think that was the first year we had passes, to be honest. Okay. Oh. I think I think so. I I could be wrong. I don't know. I mean, I never yeah. really went as a guest <laughs> all those years. So. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. yeah, so I got to go. I was going to the event, like, almost every night, honestly. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I became that guy. But it was really fun to watch it from the other side because I'd been doing it for so long and I never really got a chance to do that. Yeah. You know, that's always fun. And just back in those chill, days, your friends, you know, yeah. Back in those days, we didn't get days off. Right. Yeah. Like now everybody has the luxury of like, oh, at least, you know, they have one or two days off during the run. Right. Yeah. We didn't get that before. Just had to do the whole thing. So, start to finish, huh? Yeah. You'd work every night. And that, that was pretty much it. Unless you called in and, you know, if you called in, you better not show your face there. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. <laughs> hundred yeah. percent. So then you take the year off. You got to you actually get to enjoy it, you know, more as a guest point of view now, and you got to just kind of see all your friends work and just kind of be in the the vibe of haunt. Um, then you come back. Was that now 20... 2015. 2015. 2015. So that was an interesting year. Um, I was asked if I wanted to audition beforehand. Like this is before I like I knew I was going to come back. I just didn't know in what capacity. Pretty much at yeah. that point. So I was asked if I wanted to, to go to an audition for these new characters that they were going to be pitching. Um, and I was like, okay, that sounds interesting. Like, why not? Uh, this is the year that we did the set, seven deadly sins. So I auditioned, they kind of did like a group audition of us. Um, I think they kind of had in mind who they wanted for each role, but they kind of, you know, obviously they, had multiple people audition for the same spots just to kind of make it fair. And like, you know, you never know what somebody else might bring to the table. Right. So I auditioned, I did end up with the position of being wrath. Nice. I don't know why it might have to do something with me being so freaking aggressive. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah, so that year was a lot of fun. Um, I'm sure you recall, like before that there was like the tricksters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this was almost, same vibe, I guess, but we didn't do as many like little skits and stuff like that. And like, we were supposed to do skits. Like each of us had our zone and we'd all have like a specific skit that we would do. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, That's I'm all I got to say. Just, I'm just going to do my own thing. <laughs> Screw it. You know? 
<laughs> like we would go, like we all had like a certain time where we each had to be like, our whole group would have to travel to each location and be there at a certain time because it was like this giant like event thing that would happen. So for instance, my event took place in ghost town. Uh, it was like in fog alley. And since I was a rap, like I would set ghost uh, fog alley on fire. Oh, wasn't really fire. <laughs> I'm going to tell yeah. you that much. It, uh, um, it was like just lights and like right. sound and everything. It was still, it was a cool concept. It was really, you know, it was well thought out. Right. But I don't know if it translated well enough. Like I felt like unless you knew what was going on or like you were somehow looped in what time was things were happening, you wouldn't know what was going on. You would never know what was going on or where yeah. to be. You'd just and be like, walking what was like, why happen. is everything so orange? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I mean, by the end of the run, there were people who had finally caught on. And then we had kind of like groupies that would follow us around the park like watching what we would do because we literally just went out there and just wreaked havoc on everyone like we right. would just go out there and just mess with everyone we'd mess with other monsters we'd mess with the guests we'd mess with each other like it was great it was a lot of fun and i felt like they grabbed this handful of people which probably normally would not work together which is what made it so fun that's awesome and i think that because of that like we all just worked so well off each other. It was like, you put all the bad kids together, <laughs> which is a horrible idea, but it just worked so good. It was like, this shouldn't work at all, but it's working really well. So do that we stop exactly it, it or do we let it go? No, I think we just let it go. <laughs> yeah, just just let them do their thing. Just just back away. Yeah, just let's let <laughs> them do Look the it. other way, man. Look the yeah, other way. Just go somewhere else, man. It's all right. Come back in about yeah. five minutes. They'll, they'll be back into their routine. <laughs> yeah, we definitely got into a lot of shenanigans. I'll tell you that much. That's always fun, though. Shenanigans. I mean, I think those two, you know, I mean, haunt. everybody goes works haunt to, to scare, obviously. But I think it's those shenanigans that are the memories that you ultimately make with a lot of your peers and whatnot. So that's yeah. always a fun. I, I love hearing those stories. Um, those are those are some. I've heard some funny stuff, man. I've heard some funny stuff. Um so 2015 you got to do wrath and you were setting ghost town on fire and we were rolling a, with be, the green witch and being a misfit doing all the you know things. yeah um all the fun stuff now 2016 is a special year to me because that's the year i graduated high school and i finally got out of that prison um man only to go back so old <laughs> only to go back to that prison and, and work there as an employee now so you know now I think nice. I'm kind of pulling the strings instead of, you know. No, you the they pull the strings. <laughs> yeah, they're still they're pulling the strings. I just I say how high they, you know. Um, <laughs> 2016, what's that year look like for you? Well, well, well. Um, <laughs> so that year they were going to bring back the Deadly Seven, right? So I was kind of on the fence, like, do I want to do it again or what? Um, but before even any of that even went down, they were going to be doing like a promo shoot for the new like little commercial teaser trailer thing that, um, they were filming. And they asked me if I would be a part of it. And I'd done a lot of like promo stuff for the event before. So I was like, yeah, sure. You know, what do you want me to do? And they're like, well, um, we're going to be shooting in ghost town. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, do you want me to bring my old character? Like I saw my costume, like, what what do you want me to do and they're like well we kind of had something else in mind i was like okay well what <laughs> what is that they're like well we were wondering if you'd do the bride character and i instantly was like no <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not like i no like i okay i need to tell you this right off the bat like the bride has always been like the character for me like that was my favorite character um jean who you know, it was the bride before. Yep. She was yeah. amazing. Like, I used to love watching her. I used to love seeing her backstage. Like, everything. Like, I don't want to sound creepy, but, like. <laughs> you were a I fan. I just thought she was, she was amazing. Yeah, you were a fan. And um, so being asked to, like, portray this character that I've always held, like, in such a high regard was just so weird to me. I was just like, no, I can't do that. Like, that's weird. No. And they're like, okay, well, you know, we just thought we'd ask. Um, yeah, if you want to do, you know, your old character, that's totally fine. Like, just, you know. But it'd be nice if you could do this for us. And I was like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, I was like, okay, fine. I'll do it for the shoot. Fine. 
whatever. So I remember putting the dress on for the first time and I was just like, what the heck? This feels so weird. Like, I don't know. I could even look at myself. It was so strange. And then I got into makeup, which was even stranger because the makeup was very different from the makeup I have now. It looked just like Jane's old makeup. Okay. So it was like the style that she had. It was like more of the purple tones, right. like really like intense eyebrows, red lips. And I was just like, oh man, this is, this is a lot. I'm going to start hyperventilating. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, so we ended up filming that night and that's probably one of my favorite trailers still. Like, I don't know if you probably know which one I'm talking about. It's like the one where I'm like crawling out of the coffin. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I've seen, oh my God. I always forget you. You do a lot of promo stuff, so we're, we're actually talking to a famous person too. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, no, exactly. that's that's one of my favorites too. I, I I really love the aesthetics of of all that look and everything. Yeah, it was it was a great great promo that we did. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So so we filmed that and like it was really cool. I after everything was said and done, I was like, okay, cool. Like this is this was neat. And then they're like, all right, so what do you want to do this season? You want to go back to Deadly Seven? Uh, they had a couple of other things that they asked me if I want to do. Something Carnival, something in the new Scare Zone, which, which, you know, the Hollow. Going back to Ghost Town as my old character. And they kind of slid in, or do you want to be the bride? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, excuse me, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, uh, I have no problem coming back as a War Widow. That'd be cool. Like... I mean, I did think about some of the other ones. I, after working the Deadly Seven, I really loved Carnival. I never seen myself as that type of a character. I could see, but I could after see getting it. the chance, I huh? Could see, I could see it. I really yeah. can. I could see it if Lucio can go over there and do it. Yeah, I honestly, there was a short amount of time after the fact that I was in the Deadly Seven because every time we'd go around the parks, we had for full reign, right? We yeah. had to be in Carnival for, you know, a little part of our night. Right. Every time I was over there, I probably had the most fun. <laughs> like, I had a great time. I'm the kind of person who I don't like to hide in the dark necessarily. Like, right. I want you to see me first, and then I'm going to scare the shit out of you. So being in the light was, like, amazing to me. Like, it was perfect. Yeah. So I had so much fun over there, and, like, I contemplated, like, I kind of want to go to Carnival. Like, that would be fun. But then the other half of me is like, uh, I don't know. Like... <laughs> <laughs> is that gonna work i don't know man oh man so yeah so i kind of sat on that one for a second and uh i kept thinking and thinking and like i talked to kind of you know a few of my closest friends and they're like dude you know that this is perfect for you like why are you being weird i'm like because like this is <laughs> this is a weird thing for me like let me have this like stop it yeah um so, yeah, I kept thinking about it, thinking about it. And finally, I was just like, look, I'm going to let you guys choose for me. Just whatever it is, just let me know. And cool, because I don't want to think about this anymore. Like, I'm literally freaking out right now. So, of course, I, you know, just let them do whatever they're going to do. Talk to them later. I was like, all right, so what's the deal? Like, what am I like? Um, you're the bride. I was like. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you kind of had to know that was gonna come. I mean, they, I they were feeling, pushing for I was, it. I know, I know. <laughs> I kind of walked into it, but at the same time, I kind of like showed my interest in all the other things too, and that's why I kind of was torn also because yeah. I was like, "Well, this would be fun. That would be fun." Like, I don't know. And then I had so much fun doing the Deadly Seven, and like that was great. So that's why I was kind of like having a hard time with it also beyond the fact of just that character. <laughs> Um, but I honestly had no clue that that was going to happen, but it happened. And I just remember like up to the first night, like I was sweating it hard. <laughs> like I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Like, I feel like if I go out there and I flop, I'm going to feel like the biggest ass. Like <laughs> I was scared. I was legit yeah. scared because before, you know, I got the character, obviously, they were doing a thing where they were letting people try it out for a night. Like I know there was a lot of people who did want the character and it kind of goes back to like when I was the nurse in asylum where I was just kind of like, if somebody else wants it, like by all means, let them have it. Yeah. Like I'm the kind of person too. That's like, if there's somebody who can audition for this and they're better at it, give it to them. Like 
it shouldn't matter how long you've been there. It doesn't matter who you know. It does, none of that matters. At the end of the day, you're being cast for a role, just like in a movie. If you can portray that better than somebody else, or they see that you're better fit for you know something else they have in mind, do it. Like that's how it should work. You're being casted. It's not because I want this. No, I'll just, like that's not how it works. I'll just leave this here. Tom Cruise almost played Iron Man over Robert Downey Jr. Just saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. it, it, so it's so I, 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 I can't talk. I get what you're saying is that if someone if if you think someone can do this better, give it to them because they can probably yeah, bring an absolutely. energy that I probably won't be able to bring. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like I under I completely understand that. Now you got me in like a whole multiverse thing of like a what if glow went to uh, Carnival though. That is a very path that I'm like trying to see now i'm like what would that look like you know yeah now that's stuck in my head i'm like what <laughs> would that different. look like though i'm, I'm kind of like now what i see now in ghost town and then if i were to see you in carnival i'd be like wait this doesn't fit here but it it's working why is it working <laughs> it doesn't fit it's different but it works <laughs> but it works <laughs> you know so no i i i 100 get that like and I, that's cool that you're very much like that. You give the people the option. Like if someone else can audition and they could do it better than I can, give it to them. Absolutely. I'm like even a, to this day, like yeah. even though I've been in this character for this long, like if somebody were to come along and audition for it and they were, you know, amazing, give it to them. I'm not going to be upset. Like, yeah, of course, I'm going to be for a second like, oh, man, that sucks. But, you know, move on. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Like if somebody's better at it, let them do it. Uh, so you had talked a little bit about like having like a sort of quote unquote imposter syndrome, um, like when you first put on that uh, for that promo, uh, put on the the bride's dress. How was it now that like once you uh, began your season uh, as the bride? Well, I remember just like trying to hype myself up and like, okay, what am I gonna do? And the first thing that I thought in my head, okay, well we're committed to it. We're already doing this. Like we got to make it work now. Like there's no (laughs) turning back at this point. Right. So in my mind, I'm like, all right, well, what am I going to bring to the table with this character? Obviously, you know, I will never be Jean and that's okay because what she did was amazing and it totally worked for her. But what am I going to do to make this work for glow? Yeah. So I kind of, you know, obviously had some things in mind that I wanted to try. I feel like, the bride is a culmination of pretty much all the characters I portrayed now. And I kind of embody all of that and I've thrown it all together and use was kind of work for each character for me. And now this is what's becoming. And so I wanted to make her aggressive, obviously, which is one of my key things. I wanted her to be angry. I wanted to her just to be like completely like mind blowing, like do not fuck with this person. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of what I've tried to portray with it. Um, Jean did her thing so differently. She was aggressive too, though. That's what I always loved about her. Yeah. And that's something that I, I also tried to like use in my favor. That was another key point. Like I was telling you, like the aggressiveness, I think it just works so well for females yeah. because you don't expect it, you know? Yeah, 100%. Especially yeah. at five foot two, like you would not <laughs> expect that coming out of five foot. Yeah, two. like I'm walking down. Me and Sammy are walking down Ghost Island. We're like over six foot, and I'm just like, yeah, you know, we, we don't get scared anymore because we just have fun, you know. And then that one person, her, this one right here, <laughs> comes out of nowhere and just screams. I'm like, okay, we're gonna walk the other way now, <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> and we're done. Yeah, yeah. What I think I, I love most about your character is you, like you said, you like to be seen. You can see your, your your character coming from a mile away, literally, uh, <laughs> literally, uh, and uh, with it, there's just an energy that uh, that 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 wants to bring you in, and then once you're in, it's over, <laughs> <laughs> done. Uh, uh, <clears throat> what one uh, <laughs> getting slightly off topic here, but one one thing that me and Tony always talk about. Is how do you keep that smile the entire night? You got like, you got like you got like good cheekbones. Like you do a massage. Hey, like what, what's the here's what's my the thing. secret? I used to work at Disneyland, so that's true. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay, that is true. I mean, you got to be happy there. Yeah, you got to be happy. I there. mean, I worked at the haunted mansion, so I kind of got away with whatever. But yeah, <laughs> they, I mean, yeah, I mean, at least you worked in the the scariest place you could work in Disneyland. 
Oh, wait, no. Yeah. That, that's Small World. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, no, you worked at the second scariest place. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> you worked at the second scariest place. Um, yeah, those puppets at night, are, I would not want No, thank you. No, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. They don't turn off. I know they don't turn off. It's cheaper for them to keep them on 24-7. Honestly, yeah. In some of the attractions, there are things that never turn off. So, Or do they? <laughs> or do they? That's another scary story, but whatever. Hey, shoot the um, shit. We'll do it. I, I guarantee you we're going to do another episode because, well, I mean, there's a lot of stuff <laughs> that we're leaving out, and I'm just like, we're going to talk about that soon. Yeah, um, for sure. But I, there's something I want to bring up between, you know, you talking about, you know, you and Gene. Um, I've never seen Gene work in person, but I have seen a lot of footage of Gene. Um, I've seen you work in person, and, and I've captured a lot of footage of you during haunt season. Um, you're right. You know – your mindset going into was, I can't be Gene, so how do I make this me? The thing I like both about you guys is if you look at Gene's bride and you look at your bride, Gene had her way, you had your way, but for some reason, they both work out fantastically. Now, you can you could say, I mean, if anyone wants to say one's better than I don't say I don't think that because both of them are different in their own way, and they brought uh, a light to that character that uh, I don't think no one else can can do. Uh, when you look at Jean, like she was very like in your face, out there, loud and stuff. When you look at you, it's it's more of that like build up. It's it's like a suspense film, like in a horror film. It's like, okay, something's about to happen. A jump scare is about to happen, but I don't know when this is going to happen. And it's that build up. It may never happen, or it may happen, and you just don't expect it. And mm -hmm. that that's what I love so much about you know getting to watch your character out on Ghost Town as the bride. It, it's just been that kind of. It's like you have this kind of thing around you that it's just like this presence. Like when you – when I hear that scream down Fog Alley and I'm just walking through that gate, I'm just like, oh, fuck, dude. This is going <laughs> to – wow. Like I that is impressive. But I know what I'm in for and I can't wait to go down that alley and see her with her candlelight and everything. And, and there's just something about that with the candlelight and everything that you do is just so creepy. But it works so well for you. And I think – both you and Jean, uh, there's no one else that could take that role from you. I, I don't think. I think after you're done with this role, that you got to retire this role for good. Because like, if anywhere else were to pick <laughs> it up, I don't think I could do it third time. I mean, like you and you and Jean are just that's the bride in my opinion. Those are the two that I Thank see. Thank you. Bride. <laughs> you guys are the bride, 100. percent There's just there's no there's no ends if or buts. That's just after you're done with this character, it needs to retire. Because I was like, she was the last good one. Let's leave it at that. Yeah, it, it would be kind of weird. Like, I've thought about that because obviously I've been doing this for a really long time. And like, I don't know how much more I really have in me, to be honest with you. So obviously it's going to happen eventually. Like, what's going to happen? I'm, I'm curious. Like, I think it'll be really cool if they do find somebody else to fill the, you know, the spot. But also, like, I also feel like maybe it'd be a good idea to kind of let it rest at least for a little bit and then bring it back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it comes full circle for you too. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump a little ahead here to 2019, because you got to actually have a cameo in Origins as the bride. I mean, how does that feel? Working mazes, your, your, your the first half of your career, then going on picking up this iconic role of the bride. You know, making it your. We're gonna go back because I know there's a lot of build up to like where you are today as to, as the character, but. I, I just have to talk about that real quick. I mean, how does that feel coming full circle? Like you being in a maze now, like as the honestly, guy. it's so flattering to me. Like when they told me that they were going to do that, I was just like, no way. Like, that's so freaking cool. Like I never would have expected something like that to happen, especially like to me. I don't know. It, it might sound weird. And a lot of people are like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I don't know. It's a weird feeling. It's weird to try to like explain to somebody. And I know a lot of people might look at it as like, oh, well, you just know these people or it's because of this. Like, no, I don't. I've never asked anybody for anything. And I feel that anything that I have had the opportunity to do is because I've worked for it. Like, it's never been a I've asked somebody or, you know, they just handed it to me. Like, no, I, I feel that I've legit shown what I can do. And that's why. I've been asked to do things, you know? I don't think you got to so explain yourself I... to anyone. You got to be like, this is 22 years in the fucking making. <laughs> well, <laughs> you'll be surprised. <laughs> After this podcast, I'd be like, this is 22 years in the making. She's earned everything <laughs> she's given. She's been given. 
She's earned it all. You know what's funny, though? I think it's the fact that, you know, there are a lot of people who are so much newer to the event and they may not necessarily know, like, well, how long have you been here? Like, if they legit were to, like, sit down and have, have this conversation and, like, they might be having a little bit of a different tone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But yeah, a few of us have laughed about that because, you know, we've been there for so long. And I feel like a lot of people have been like, oh, they've probably only been here for like, you know, three or four years. Like, no, yeah. <laughs> not even close. No, I've, I've, I've heard a lot of stories of, of people that have that been here, been there long and stuff. And a lot of them are hanging it up next year, but a lot of them feel like they could still go. And I'm like, hey, you do you. You have a good time. Just as long as you're having fun doing it keep going as long as you want to go as long as you can physically hand it handle it physically and mentally handle it by all means i'll be, I'll be there to support all of you that's always yeah next year's next year is one of those years where i'm like next year will be like it next year's my 10th year officially in ghost town so for me i'm like it might be kind of a good like even number but we'll see we'll see where it goes like in my mind uh i'm kind of leaning that way but I won't really know until we're there, to be honest. Yeah, we've been getting a lot That's... of exclusives on the podcast this 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 season, and and that, I think that was one of the biggest ones right there. Yeah, we've but, we've heard it from a lot of people. 50, like you said, numbers are they're adding up. Uh, so I, I and and you know whether you do it fifteen more years or you do it fifteen more hours, you know <laughs> we're, we're we're appreciative of the time nonetheless. Yeah. Um, so so going back so. When did you really begin to to differentiate your character? Like, for example, like when did you develop like your character walk and like the other decisions your character makes? I mean, honestly, the first year, my biggest hurdle obviously was like, how am I going to make this different? Mm -hmm. That was all I was focused on. What am I going to do to make this different? So once I kind of figured that out, and that's also when I kind of started implementing the the candle. Like, um, one of my friends actually was like, because he knows how much I love the haunted mansion, and of course, I love the haunted mansion bride. And he was like, you know, it'd be really cool if you had a light. And I was like, dude, that'd be rad. Like, that it's kind of like, I'm, you know, pay paying my homage to the Haunted Mansion bride and then this bride. And like, okay, that'd be really cool, like, to tie into it. So I tried it. And I remember, you know, he was there as a guest one night. He, he saw me come up with a light. And he's like, dude, that looks fucking creepy. I was like, it does? He's like, dude, it's gross. I'm like, perfect. <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> it, it works. I've seen you stand in some dark corners just with that light, like with the smile and everything. And I'm just like, I, I just like randomly will turn and be like, oh, <laughs> there, there's the bride. I'm just going to keep going that way now. Let her do her thing. It yeah, I think I even do that to other people that are, you know, they're working with me and goes down. Like sometimes they're like, oh, my God, I didn't know you were right there. And I'm like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard some stories of you purposely, you know, scaring some people by the name of Lucio, who's absolutely terrified of you in costume. That's not true. Isn't another one of our friends terrified of her in costume by the name of Matt Barrera? You know what's really funny about that? He was. You know who I ended up scaring a lot with this past season? Matt. <laughs> that must have been kind of like that. One of those moments where like, this is how I face my fear right here. It's scary. Yeah, with it, the... totally That's it totally was. It totally was. Because he we would actually tell had us so like, much fun. He would tell us, like, dude, she scares the hell out of me. She's like, nice person. She's an awesome person outside of that. But when she's in that bride costume, it scares the fuck out of me. I was like, that's have you now listening now now listening to what I've heard today, I think that's exactly what she was going for, dude. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Yeah. I mean, he still doesn't like the way I smell because I smell like roses all the time. Right. Because I literally like douse myself in like old lady rose perfume. Because I just want to smell like a funeral, if right. that makes any sense. Yeah. So whenever he's near me, he can smell it. He's always like, oh, I can smell you. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I may or may not have accidentally got my perfume on his stuff sometimes. Um, what else? <laughs> and there's like some sometimes where I like will have a certain expression and he's just like, nope, can't look at you. And I'm like, OK. Like one night I actually had a sub for my makeup artist because my makeup artist was an in. Right. And there was kind of a similarity to Jean's old makeup in it. And I remember he, I walked back there and he saw me. He's like, no, no, you, you can't do that. I was like, what? It's just my face. And he's like, no. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like him. That sounds like him. 
Yeah, but I honestly, I had so much fun scaring with them this past season. It was just like, it was refreshing to me. Like, it was really fun to have something, you know, new set of eyes out there. And like, everything about him, like, reminded me of like old school ghost town. So it was really cool. I really enjoyed working with him. You know, you're going to make his day just by saying that. Right? Yeah, that's the biggest compliment. That's probably the that. biggest compliment you're going to. He's going to listen to this podcast. He's probably going to cry. I mean, I've told him a few times, so he knows. That's good. Yeah. But like I told him, like a lot of the things that he brought with his character, like like I, I've been around for a while. So <laughs> like what I used to see with the guys that I used to work with in Ghost Town, which is like a whole nother generation that, you know, a lot of people look up to now. I got to work with them, which was really cool. But right. seeing him like bring a lot of that to the table with the character he brought, I thought was so cool. And I made sure to tell him that too. Like just everything from the way he tied his character together, like costume wise, the way he slid, like, I don't know. There was something like, I think that's why I felt so like comfortable working with him. And yet he thinks he's still boring enough to be on this show. What? Oh yeah. man. <laughs> We've been trying to get him on the show for about a year now. And uh, damn it. Just, you know, <laughs> one day. One I mean, day. I can't say anything because it took me a while to. <laughs> no, but listen, I, I mean, I get it. He he legitimately won't. I, I could book him at any point. I really can. It's just he thinks he's too boring enough to be on the show that no one oh will be God. interested in his story. You, on the other hand, it was because our schedules just never matched up. And now they finally did. So I was like, okay, that works. Like, it's different. Him, he just thinks he's boring. I'm like, dude, you're not boring. I literally am entertained by you when I see you at Haunt and when you tell me these stories. I was like, I understand you can't probably tell every story on camera, but tell what you can. I mean, we all have those. Yeah, every. I mean, yeah, yeah off camera, let's talk about some of the fucking, th you know, <laughs> but like on camera, it's like we get it. There's things that we could share with the public and there's things that we, we keep to ourselves, you know, that was just for us, you know, so um, I, I, I love Matt and... Uh, no pressure. If he ever wants to come on, he knows he has an invite. If he never wants to come on, it doesn't hurt me because he's a good he's a, a good friend of mine and he's a supporter of, of the show. Uh, and he and he literally gives me uh, construct uh, criticism back for all my podcast. This needs to be a little bit lower. This needs to be louder. It's like okay, thanks, Matt. <laughs> appreciate it. Hey, we all need that one friend. That, yeah, you know, and you know what? I appreciate him. For it. I, I appreciate him for it. And and yeah, but uh, he's probably gonna get mad now that we're talking about him this long. He's like, why'd you guys talk about me this long? I already know. I already know all the text messages. And Just blame it on yeah. me. It's fine. <laughs> um, uh, changing the changing the topic because um, you you speak of running running partners. Um, I know like this year um, a, a partner that you had run with um, France what didn't come back. Was there like a bit of an adjustment with that? Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, France and I first started working together in Asylum, so that's yeah. how long we we knew each other as far as scaring and stuff like that. Right. Um, when I got into the bride character, we started scaring together again. And it just, it, we know how we work, you know, it just works so well. We know how to feed off each other. And like, obviously I want to have this big intimidating looking guy around me. Not that people m really mess with me anyway, but having him <laughs> around me doesn't hurt, you know? So much more comfortable. So, I would feel so much more comfortable. I'd be like, oh, oh yeah, big dog, let's come on, let's go. Yeah, let's roll. <laughs> yeah. let's He's an it. intimidating figure. Yeah, he Especially is. Especially you see you coming, and then you see him coming. I'm just oh, yeah. like, I don't know who to be more scared alone. of. <laughs> it's so no, good. No, for sure. I love it. So, yeah, this this season was really, uh, it was weird for me. Okay, I mean, obviously, I can hold my own by myself. Yeah. But, you know, always having somebody with you all the time. Not that I wasn't surrounded by people. Um it felt weird. It really did. Because, you know, when you're used to always being with somebody and you're always like, even though you may not necessarily be scaring together every second, you guys are always generally in the same vicinity. Right. And so you're always kind of checking to make sure they're there and like watching their back. And like, I kind of felt like, OK, what do I do with myself? Like, obviously, I'm scaring. Right. But right. I didn't feel like, OK, I guess I could just go over there now. Like nobody is going to notice if I just walk to a different side of the park like yeah. <laughs> i don't know it was really weird it was really weird yeah i mean i i'll i'll as a guest especially coming in 2019 and then coming in 2021 um to see him not with you this year was was very weird i was like i see her but where no okay um big sad but um he wanted to take the year off i applaud that i no, no, doesn't hurt to you know like like lo says sometimes Sometimes life just gets, you know, is more important than, you know, what you got to do. And, and, and Glow even said in, when she did her, you know, 
from her transition a year off to back, you know, it's just a, it's just life, you know. Did he come at least mm-hmm. to visit you throughout yeah, the season? He, he did. did. That's awesome. We made sure to get a picture together, so that's all that matters. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. That's cool. But uh, we hope yeah. to see see both of you back next season for the fiftieth. Um, because... I think he might be done. To be honest. Oh, with you, really? But... Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, like I said, we're all getting to that age yeah. where we're like, uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, you know, yeah. after all the things that we've done so far, like we're we're falling apart, man. <laughs> <laughs> You said you already said it when you were doing back bends. To now, it's like, oh, now my back actually yeah. hurts. <laughs> went too hard. I feel bad for like everybody who slides all the time. Like you guys are young now, just wait. You can look up to any of these guys who've been sliding for a long time. Go ask them how their knees are. Trust me. <laughs> Yikes! I know one guy that probably <laughs> still feels like he's twenty. Freaking Dieterman. Oh, Dieterman. Yeah, yeah. Old Dickerman. Dickerman. Good old Dickerman. <laughs> Uh, I love the bald man. Um, but no, I mean, I, I think for, for me as a fan, uh, from what I've gotten to see from you, I mean, I've probably, I probably got to see you more times when I would go back before I even was doing Knights of Horror. But now that I do Knights of Horror, it's like I start recognizing and appreciating things even more. So I probably ran into you many years that I've gone to Knots um, somewhere, wherever you were those years that I went. Um, and from what I've seen... Uh, when I actually was paying attention to like everything starting in 2019, um, your energy is just always 120%. Like it never, I, there was never a night that I would show up to the event where the energy was never there. I would hear you screaming constantly all night. And the only thing I would think to my mind was, man, I feel sorry. Cause she's not going to have a voice the next day. <laughs> But not going to lie. First weekend, my voice is always shot. And honestly, it usually takes to like maybe the second week of November for me to start talking normally because I get this really like deep, sexy, raspy voice that just kind of sticks around (laughs) until then. And everybody's like, yep, we can tell it's haunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) it's haunt. Yeah, no, but I I just I I've absolutely it's always been a pleasure to watch what you do out there. Um, You bring an aspect to Ghost Town that um like I said, no one can replicate. No one can replicate or or try to even intimidate because it's like this is something that you created from the ground up again, something fresh that you were you were given like a passion of the torch and kind of something fresh to do with you, and you you made it work. You made it, you made it your bitch. You own that shit now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you own that shit now. Um, so I I just I. For however many years you have left out on Ghost Town, I mean, I'm just going to enjoy whatever time left we have with the bride because this is a character that um, has left a staple at this event from commercials that you've been a part of to merchandise you've been on uh, to all this, all these opportunities that, that have come to you. Um, and it all led you to this. Now... Uh, would be your 10th year on ghost town next year, the 50th anniversary of the event. I mean, some giant milestones for you alone. I mean, that is such Trust a, me, it's something I've been thinking about quite a bit. I've actually been thinking about this since before COVID. I'm not going to lie because technically, you know, this past year would have yeah. been, would and have been in 50th. my mind at that point, I was like, I'm only going to work to the 50th and I'm done. Yeah. And it's like, it's weird to think that. Yeah. It's a weird feeling to have because, I mean, it's just become a part of my life. I mean, it is a part of my life. I, I live hunt pretty much year round. You know what right. I mean? Like, there's really not too much time in my year where it's not hunt related. Like, <laughs> it's literally my job. Yeah. yeah well, I, I did want to dive into that because that's not, not a perspective that we normally get to get on, on, on the show. Um, how long have you been working uh, on the behind the scenes team with Knots? Um, I first started doing paint stuff in 2011. Ooh, okay. So um, at that time, I was just like a seasonal where I would just come in for like haunt build and I was helping like paint the mazes and stuff then. Um, I did that 2011, 2012. And I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. But then like my schedule just didn't permit for me to do it anymore because I started doing more stuff at Disney. Um, I became a lead and like a trainer and all that stuff. So I had to really commit myself. So I didn't really have much of a chance to take time off for that if I was going to take time off to work on. Right. So yeah. I kind of, you know, backed off of that. And um, it, what was it? 2015, 
after that season, that's when I decided to come back and start working paint again. And I've pretty much stayed on full time ever since then. Oh, so cool. yes. Yeah. I've been talking to her for the last couple of weeks and she deserves the biggest vacation ever <laughs> for the hours she's been putting in. <laughs> so, Dude. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know how you do it, but I applaud you that you keep getting up every day and, and going in and doing Thank it. You. That's, that's, that's that. Yeah. That's, it's a tough schedule, but you, 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 you somehow managed to do it. And I applaud you for that. It's gratifying. I'm not going to lie. Um, you don't necessarily get like this whole praise or anything like that. I mean, obviously people that know what I do and see the stuff that I post or whatever, they know what I do, right. but it's really kind of cool to be able to see the stuff that you work on out in the park and just like watching people enjoy it. Like for instance, not even haunt stuff. Like if we paint like a giant photo op and you see, you know, people and their families taking pictures with it and stuff like that, like it's cool. It's a cool feeling. Yeah. So I, I really enjoy that. Um, I've always done art stuff pretty much my entire life. And as a kid, I always said I wanted to be an artist. And I always thought that was the stupidest thing to want to say, <laughs> you know, that's what I want to be. But somehow or another, I guess that's where I ended up. I'm an artist. Yeah. Hey, damn good one at that, too. Well, thank you. There you go. Um, oh, man, it's it's uh, it's kind of hard to see a future without the bride. But all things, you know, nothing lasts forever. Um, but I think the time that we do have left with the bride, I think are going to be some of the most special moments put on the street uh, of ghost town. Because, um, like I said, with the 50th and your 10th, I mean, it's just double milestones right there. And, and that's just, that's a round of applause. So congratulations on, uh, what's hopefully going to be a 10 year career on ghost town. And thank uh, you. And overall, honestly, I did all the math. Of course, <laughs> this will be, this will be my 20th haunt because of the two wow, years I took off. Right. So it'll be my 10 years in ghost town, my 20th total, and then it'll be the 50th. So that's why I'm kind of like, eh, maybe it's a nice time to uh, bow out gracefully. Nice. We'll see. Nice. I mean, go, on you, go out on your own accord is important. Yeah. 100%. I've always said too, like, I don't want to be that person who's still doing it and they hate it. Like yeah. I want to be able to say, you know what? I'm ready to just be done and this is it. Um, I also have never wanted to be that person who's like, this is my last year. This is my last. And then they keep coming back. So, <laughs> so I, I'm going to, I'm just putting it out there. Like, these are things I'm thinking about, like what will happen. Right. Who knows? Who knows? No, but no official announcement, no official announcement, yeah. but, uh, you know what? I am, a. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just grateful to have seen you do what you got to do and, and, and to hear your story, uh, I only knew I only knew a very small portion of that story, and that was the two years, three years that I've seen you work as the bride. To hear more of it, and I've, I, I, like I said, we follow each other on Instagram, so I see like she's posted up like memories from back in the day of stuff. So I've I've seen stories and stuff, but to actually hear it from you, um, it, it's been quite the journey. It actually has, and it's really, it's really expanded my haunt knowledge now. So I'm, <laughs> I'm really, I'm really, I feel like a happy little haunt nerd now. So. Yay. Um, <laughs> Anytime. But, I'm uh, sure there's plenty of other things I could probably tell you all about. <laughs> oh, yeah. A hundred percent. But I, I just want to say from the bottom of our hearts here on the Nights of Horror, uh, thank you for everything that you do on Ghost Town and year after year making it one of our favorite scare zones of all time. I mean, Sammy and I would sit there repeatedly in 2019 just to watch everyone do their thing and, and we enjoyed it um we don't we didn't get the opportunity to do that this year and in 2021 as much as we would have loved to but we still got the opportunity to do it and the nights that we did go it was it was just an experience of its own chef's kiss chef's kiss thank you I, i'm sure i can speak on behalf of everybody like we really appreciate hearing stuff like that it makes it worth it, you know? Yeah. No, and, and that's why we do Scaractor Appreciation Month, and that's why it's been just an honor for us to even host this all month long because um, we want to provide a platform for everyone to share stories and just vibe about things that we love too. So um, I couldn't have – I you know, this season finale was, uh, like I said, two years in the making, but I'm glad that we got to do it, and I'm glad we got to end with uh, – we got to end really strong. I mean – this is a glow. You don't even understand. Like this is probably one of my favorite podcasts we've ever done. And we've done a lot of great podcasts. We've had a lot of great guests, but this is probably one of my favorites. Thank you. That really history. means a lot. Yeah. Um, but 
again, thank you so much. We appreciate you. And uh, we look forward to seeing where you go in the 50th. But, Sammy, you look like you got a question. No, I'm ready to close this thing. Well, I'll, okay. Well, then I'll ask the question because she's the first time on the Mindless oh, Podcast. Oh, 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 you're, oh, you're right. Oh, you're right. I do a, got a question. The hardest oh. question of this show, <laughs> no, Glow. All, oh, yeah. the, all of everything you just told us has hey, been leading to this. Me. It's been leading to this. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, th this can make or break this entire episode. So be forewarned. I think I know what the answer is going to be to this question because you may have mentioned it a little bit earlier in the yeah. show. But we want to ask just in case it's a different answer. What is your favorite scary movie? My favorite? Yeah. The Exorcist. Oh, I see it flip, bro. I thought you were going to say Nightmare on Elm Street. I, no. I really thought it was. Nightmare on Elm Street is definitely one that I enjoy quite a bit. But The Exorcist, hands down, has always been my favorite movie. And I also feel that I try to kind of incorporate that into a lot of what I do. I can see that. Nice. I, I, I mean, I've, I'm pretty sure if the event was a little bit more R-rated, you could use the language too. But you can't necessarily yep. go around telling everyone <laughs> your mother sucks oh, cocks in hell. <laughs> you can't go around telling I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you might get in trouble. I mean, no one has Not to know. Not if nobody knows. Oh, I no mean, one has to know. <laughs> I, if you if you want to go out with a, a fire and you you know you might want to say it a little loud on your last day. Just kidding. Don't do that. Look, the bride doesn't talk. That's correct. Yeah, but she does correct. yell. And I can hear that in Ghost Town, and I love the yell. She does yell a bring, lot. Bring the war widow does, back. Does the war widow talk? She talked. She yelled. There we go. <laughs> a lot of things. uh oh special appearance last night. Just kidding. Oh, I mean that might be really interesting actually. <laughs> All right. Well, the only thank you so much, Glow, for for answering all of our our, our, our rigorous and tough questions. Uh, we we appreciate your time. We know that it is valuable. Um, so we're just going to close it out like we normally do. Um, if you if, if you like this video, go ahead and drop that like button. Um, if Glow has scared the living poop out of you, go ahead and drop a comment down below or your favorite memory of Glow because obviously she has a vast haunt career uh, spanning over 22 years and uh, 20 years of doing it. So um, if she's gotten you, whether it be an asylum, uh, if she got you in the Jaguar queue, let us know because <laughs> uh, we, yeah, we, we'd love to. Yeah, let me know because damn. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah go ahead and uh drop a comment down below if you haven't done so already go ahead and hit that subscribe button or turn those bell notifications on um so that you can uh be uh aware of uh the great videos coming up we got seasons of screaming season whatever it's called season, season screamings. Screamings. i don't know what it's called season of screams is a great documentary it's a good movie so it is that. yeah it is uh, is that the one with uh with, scott yeah where he looks like freaking yes. slim shady yeah yes, yes. <laughs> Oh, I, I've no, called them every need boy to, band. We need to remake that. Yeah, I've called them every boy band after watching. I'm like Slim Shady, Backstreet Boys, In Sync. <laughs> you're all those. You're totally all those characters. It, yeah. yeah, all those characters. So turn turn those bell notifications on. We got some great content coming out this week. Um, and if nothing else, we really hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace. Peace. Thank you, every scare actor. Appreciate you all. Thank you so much. <laughs>